Hey guys, welcome back for another Tool Time Tuesday. I'm Melissa Muir. It's been a long time since we've done a project just for fun. So today I thought I'd show you how to make a very simple hollow form pendant. It's also a way that you can make some of those lentil beads, or if you wanted to take it a little bit further, a bead as well. I'm not gonna go quite that far today though. However, we are going to do a hollow form and I'm also going to set a stone inside of it. So let's jump in and take a look. So for this, I have already rolled out two pieces of 20 gauge metal, which is about 0.8 millimeters. In this case, I'm using sterling silver. I have already annealed this, rolled it through with some pattern plates. In this case, I chose two pattern plates uh, done up by Roberta Peel. You can find her stuff at Oregon Trail Silver. She's got some wonderful, wonderful textures. So that's what I've used already on these. I did not anneal these yet, again, after rolling these through the mill uh, and that's kind of desirable when I'm going to go into punch whether I'm using a hydraulic press or a disc cutter in this case I'm using a Durston disc cutter and I want to use this largest hole which is one and a quarter inches it's one of the things that I really like about the Durston cutter is that it is so big so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my metal in here but I also have created a pack of shims okay and the shims are wonderful and because you've got three connection points or alignment points you really don't need it but I still always use them and so what I did was I just cut out the the sizes or the gauges of material that I use most often so in this case I said it's 20 gauge or 0.8 millimeters and I'm just going to place that shim on the opposite side of where I'm cutting so I'm here so I'm going to put the shim here I'm going to close this down I don't need to make it too tight but I definitely want to hold my metal into place so it doesn't bounce around. Other thing that I like to use is some kind of lubricant. You can use beeswax, you can use uh, burlife, any of those kind of lubes like that. And all I need to do is just go around that edge of my punch. It doesn't take much. You don't need to dig it in. You don't have to get it all over the surface, but just basically that cutting edge. I'm going to use a nice strong hammer. In this case, this is a one pound uh, fret stamping hammer, but you could use a one pound brass hammer. The thing I really like though is the brass. That's what you want to use. So we're going to give this a good couple of wax, get this through. When I'm using something that's a little larger, like one and a quarter inch, it's going to take a little bit more effort. Sorry, my camera is attached to my table, so it's going to shake a little bit. And we have our first disc. So I'm going to repeat with the next one. So now I have my two discs and on the one, I'm going to cut it out. This is going to become the top of my piece, this one that has the toad skin. And then the one that has kind of our airy swirl, that is going to become my back plate. So I'm just gonna take a minute here, get this one pierced out, and we will be ready to shape and form these. Now, because I'm going to be piercing out the inside of this, I can actually use one of these punches in here to cut that out. So I'm going to insert this here into the three millimeter hole going to use my three millimeter punch got my metal tightened down and now we're going to just put a hole into that and now I have a place to insert my saw blade so for this next section what I'm going to do is just thread this onto my saw blade get my blade back in here tightened up not quite there it's better and now I'm just going to do kind of a freestyle uh, opening into my piece. Now that I have my two pieces, we are ready to form these, but first I'm going to anneal them so that I can make certain that they form correctly and evenly and smoothly. 
I now have my pieces sitting here in my pumice. One easy trick that you can use is you can use some Sharpie and just kind of mark your pieces up a little bit. And when that Sharpie disappears, I go just a little bit beyond that and that is when I have annealed my piece. So I'm going to get my torch lit and we'll just kind of work our way around this piece. Want to be very careful not to get it too hot. And this little one that has the cutout shouldn't take very long at all. One of the other things that I watch for is I will watch for that oxidation to kind of come into play. And then if I run my torch over it, you'll see that it looks like it's clean. And that pretty much tells me that it's at that a point. So now I'm just going to work on this disc. This one will take a little bit longer, but still not too much. So I like to come in with my torch, move it away, come in a little bit and move it away. Okay, and you'll see that that Sharpie has now disappeared and when I bring the torch onto it, it just looks like clean silver. And again, that tells me that I'm at that right temperature. So quench and pickle these and then we're gonna come back to form. Now it is important that I pickle these because right now you'll see that there's oxidation on them. If I were to try to form this with the oxidation, I then have the chance of knocking that oxide into my metal and I would never get it out. So it's better to clean these before you do that and then dry them very, very well. Now that these have gone through the pickle, that I've dried them off, I'm now ready to form these. Now I'm going to be using a dapping set and I want to use a fairly large punch. So I'll look through my dapping set to see what I have. The first round, I want to make it so that it's pretty shallow. So I'm going to use the largest dapping punch and sphere on here. Now, so that I don't ruin my, my design, I like to use a piece of craft foam. So I wanna make it so that my piece of craft foam at least fits my piece. So you could do a larger one, a smaller one, it doesn't really matter, but I definitely wanna at least cover my piece. So I'm going to just kinda of settle this down in here like so, put my piece in, the dapping punched in, and then I'm just going to use a weighted a nylon mallet here and just kind of form this down into the crevice. I like to rock this around a little bit and then readjust. Now, if I find that my foam is hindering too much, then that's definitely when I'll switch to a smaller piece of foam and try again. And I'll check the dome of my piece and that's looking pretty good. So next I'm going to do the same thing. So again, I'm just gonna place that design face down and I'm going to work that in. And once again, I've got a nice dome on my piece. And I'm going to anneal this and repeat, stepping to smaller and smaller sizes of my punches until I get the form that I want. Now one of the things that I have found when you do something like this and you have the opening already pierced out quite a bit, then it changes its shape a little differently than a solid dome. So in this case, what's going to happen when I go to solder these two together, I'm going to place the one here on the back and you'll notice that the one that has the pierced out shape has a little bit of a rim here and I'm going to use that to my advantage because that means that I can place my solder right there and it will flow into that and you do have to still be careful that it doesn't flow up too much onto the patterned back plate. But it gives me a place to place my solder and at least go through and get everything into place and then we end up cleaning up that edge for a nice tight fit. Now there are a number of ways to do this and like I said, this was just a really quick down and dirty way to do this pendant. Um, a lot of times if I'm trying to match these up exactly, I would wait until I have my piece formed before I would do the piercing. 
but in this case I wanted to go ahead and pierce that out first so you can see what's happening there then usually if I again if I were trying to match these up side by side or you know right rim to rim then I would run these on some sandpaper to flatten them out I don't want to flatten this one out right now because right now this ridge is kind of at an angle and it fits the angle of the pierced piece that I am working on. So I'm going to get that placed into position. And I'm not going to actually uh, flux out here on this outer part. I want this to oxidize, inhibit the solder from flowing up onto the back part of my piece. Now, because I'm going to be filing some of this away, I'm actually just going to place my solder chips out here on the edge or I could do a pick soldering method either way. If I'm going to do a pick soldering method, I want to just place a little piece of solder board next to my piece so that I can pick up that solder and bring it in. And I think that's the method I'm going to use for this. So now I'm just going to get my torch going. I'm going to pick up my first piece of solder here. And I'm going to warm my piece up. And when the time is right, I'm just going to touch that solder to the edge of my piece. Let that flow into place. I'll pick up the next piece of solder. And there we go. That was a beautiful flow. It just flowed right in, right along the edge where it needed to be. And that looks really good. I watched that solder flow right into those seams, which is exactly what I wanted to see. And perfect. Okay. Next, I'm going to quench and pickle this. And like I said, I actually watched that solder flow into each of those seams, so that was wonderful. Next, I'm just going to use a hand file to remove this ridge, just kind of bring it into alignment, and then we'll be ready to solder our stone setting in place, as well as the ring for our bale. Once you're done filing this ridge, you can touch it up with sandpaper or even some of the silicone rotary tools. For this piece, I'm going to be setting a six millimeter tube setting right here in the middle. Now, before I do that, I want to address the surface in here. So there's a number of different accessories that you can use in here. I'm just going to use some radial discs and just kind of clean it up in here. And now that I have an even surface inside, it's time to solder our setting into place. I'm going to place just a little bit of flux right here where I want my piece to be soldered into place. I don't want to go out too far because I don't want to have my solder flow everywhere. Now another thing that I like to do is just kind of dip my setting into my flux and then I can place it in my into position. Now in this case I am using a setting from Halstead. It already has a seat cut into it so you need to make certain if you're using these that you place the setting so that the seat is up 
Otherwise, you're gonna end up having to recut a seat. Next, I'm just gonna place a couple pieces of solder inside of that. It's not gonna take much, but I do want to make certain that my solder is touching the walls of my bezel. Now when I solder this into place, I want to heat up my piece, but I'm going to concentrate more here on the back, on the underside. So this is kind of sitting up here in the rocks, and I'm just going to concentrate more on that back plate, and it will automatically heat my piece up and get that solder to flow onto that bezel. Now you want to be very careful while it does this bubbling here with our flux as it dries. Okay, and once that bubbling is stopped, I can reposition my solder a little bit. There we go. That's a bit better. So again, I'm just gonna concentrate out here. Every now and then I'll pass it into my piece, but really I'm just gonna concentrate underneath. And I'm just watching kind of that story of my flux and my metal. And now my flux has gone clear and glassy, so that means it's about time for my solder to flow. And there it went, and I just see that beautiful little ring right around that, um, around my bezel. And that's going to be that. I'm going to go ahead and pickle this one more time because the edge of my piece has oxidized since it had just been freshly uh, sanded there. So I'm going to go ahead and get this pickled one more time and then we're going to attach the ring that will become our bale. For this next part we want to take this ring and I've just created a ring and I cut off some of the ends on this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two pieces of solder and just solder them onto the end of these rings and then we're going to place that onto our pendant. I just move these pieces of solder right up next to that and just get it to where it flows right there on the end. So I'm just going to use these rocks here to kind of get our piece into position. I'm also going to hold it here with our board. Next, I'm going to flux on the edge of our piece and I'm going to pick up our ring here with our cross locking tweezers. And I'm gonna hold these into place just like so and solder this onto the edge of our pendant, like that. And I'm gonna get this into position. It's gonna require a little bit of a steady hand here. Again, I'm warming up the entire piece, not concentrating so much on the top of this where they're going to sit, and then the rings. There we go, our solder's just getting ready to flow now. And there goes one. Let's see if we can get the other to flow. And there is the second. Hold it for just a second while it solidifies. And now we have our bale in place. Now that this is out of the pickle, I just ran over this with a brass brush. So I just kind of gave that outer edge a nice polish. I'm going to leave the inside kind of that matte finish. I really like that. And now all I need to do is to set my stone. In this case, I'm going to be using a six millimeter purple CZ. And I'm just going to place that into the inside of this. Now I like to do this on a nice urethane mat. That's going to give me enough uh, kind of support to be able to set the stone while still protecting that dome that I have on the underside of this. So I'm going to be using a setting punch that I have. I'm going to place that directly on top of this and then I'm going to just gently tap with my hammer. A 
look at that to see how I'm coming with my stone setting. I think that I can go just a little bit more on that. Put that back into position and hammer again. And that is looking much better. So now I have my piece all set and all I need now is to attach my chain. In this case, you'll notice that this ring right here is kind of large and that is because I plan on using multiple rings to attach to my chain itself. But there you have it, a very simple hollow form pendant or in this case we would call this kind of a shadow box pendant uh, very basic, just two of your domes and we're all set to go. So as you can see, it's not too difficult at all, especially when you're just taking two domed pieces and putting them together. There are ways, like I said, to be able to put these together to make different types of beads, and that's a whole other video altogether. As always, if you like these videos and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Make sure you ring that bell so that you get the notifications. Give me a thumbs up. And, and even more important, make sure you drop me some comments down there in the bottom section. I do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Possible. Have a wonderful week and we will see you guys next time.